guys, thanks for joining us this week. My name is April and this is Drex. He's my two-year-old Connie Corso. So this week we're gonna talk about um, dog parks and we're gonna chat a little bit about, hi. <laughs> we're gonna chat a little bit about why we personally choose not to go to dog parks, just to give you guys some information. Um, a lot of times owners think dog parks are the only way they can socialize and exercise their dogs. Um, but unfortunately, in our opinion, we believe the risks far outweigh the benefits of dog parks. And then at the end, we'll give you some good alternatives to do besides dog parks if you're still not sure where to go from there. So um, with that being said, we're gonna be showing a little bit of some footage. Um, I have been going around online of dogs at dog parks. Um, some of it might not be super easy to stomach and might be a little uncomfortable, but we believe it's important to showcase what can actually happen in these situations and why you need to be an educated owner on it. So with that being said, let's go ahead and get right into it. So one issue at dog parks is that not all dogs play styles are compatible. Just like humans, we all have different personalities and ways we prefer to interact with people. Dogs are very similar. So one might be a little full on in your face, like a golden retriever, super happy to meet everyone. And then you might have a dog that's a little bit more reserved, might want to just sit on the outside and watch before they feel comfortable. And dog parks essentially kind of just throw your dog into them and let them try to figure it out for themselves. Hi, bud. Um, and so, for example, Drax is pretty, um, he likes to play rough and tumble with other big dogs. He just finds that really fun and then he likes when they chase him and he chases them. And some other dogs are not comfortable with that play style and prefer not to play that way. Um, and so then they will try to correct your dog to tell them, knock it off, I don't like that. And some dogs may not take that well or not understand that correction and things can escalate. Um, and some dogs just will not understand your dog's play style at all. And it can make them really uncomfortable and really defensive and just put them in a really hard and awkward spot if the owner is not aware enough and not seeing those systems. And when a dog feels awkward and back into the corner, that's when bad things can happen and their warnings and their signs escalate. And that's where we can oftentimes lead to a dog fight. So essentially right from the beginning, you are putting your dog in kind of a weird situation. So they're going in through these gates and they're met by three, four, five, however many dogs are in the park, they tend to all rush the new dog that comes in. And that can be extremely overwhelming for this new dog and instantly their energy levels go up and are heightened. When a dog is rushed by several other dogs, they can often become over aroused and a little bit defensive. Dogs playing in parks sometimes are unable to calm themselves down and can get into a state of sustained arousal that can get them into trouble. Due to the very high energy level and excitement and arousal, it may cause dogs to act inappropriately or uncharacteristically that can lead to incidents down the road that owners never saw coming. Unfortunately, another issue is most dog owners can't even pinpoint when their dog is over threshold and too excited or too aroused to be able to intervene. Which leads me to my next point. So dogs learn that their owner is essentially helpless in these situations to them. So as you see in this video, dogs very quickly learn that their owners have no control, especially when they allow other dogs to play rough with them and body slam and roll all over them. When discussing this point, it's really important to understand that a dog's perception of safety matters more than ours as humans. It can be difficult for us owners who may dismiss their dog's fear as unwarranted since we understand that the other dog means no harm. A dog that is being chased or bullied by another dog is not only learning to avoid other dogs, but he's also learning that his owner is completely ineffective to help him. When a dog learns that their owner is not going to advocate for them, they often learn to advocate for themselves. So in this clip, you're going to see this German Shepherd. It is obviously very overwhelmed. And what it's going to be doing here in just a minute is asking its owner for help by cowering at his feet for jumping up on him. He wants out of that situation. And the owner is clueless that his dog is asking for some relief. And he just forces him to sit in that overstimulating environment and deal with it. By looking at the body language of this dog, look at his tucked ears, his tail is tucked, he's licking his lips, he is highly uncomfortable in this situation and he is trying to ask for help from his owner. 
Like I stated earlier, many well-intentioned owners are unfortunately naive to their dog's body language in order to help advocate for their dog in these situations. So something that is really common that I see um, just from even observing at dog parks is that your dog has learned disobedience. What that means is they get into this environment with other dogs, it's super exciting, energy levels are very heightened, and all of a sudden they learn that you have no control over them. Your commands go out the window, your recall goes out the window, they're not listening and they don't have to and they figure that out fast. So even if you think, oh, my dog is a set exceptionally well-trained, there's no problem, I can take him and call him off, you can quickly realize that when there's that many dogs and that much excitement going on, you're not as high value to your dog as you think they are. More often than not, even really well-trained dogs are going to choose other dogs and that play and that excitement over the commands of their owner because we just aren't exciting and high value enough to them in that environment. Um, so something to think about is that your dog can very easily blow you off and then what do you do? This is kind of a hard clip to watch, but it's really important to understand what could actually happen at a dog park. It's naive to believe that it could all be butterflies and rainbows. So what happens if your dog gets into a fight? Are you prepared to know how to stop it? Are you an owner that can get involved and advocate for your dog? Something as an owner that you have to be aware of is if your dog has an incident in the park, you are going to be working on undoing all of that behavior outside of the park. Are you prepared to spend hundreds of hours and hundreds of dollars on training to undo the unwanted behavior that your dog learned in those 15 minutes in the park? Please realize, especially if you own a Connie Corso, that if your dog has an incident at the park, and even if it didn't start it, oftentimes it will be pinned on your dog due to its breed stereotype. Are you willing to risk your dog's potential life for the dog park? One of the more obvious reasons that dog parks are more of a risk is it's a breeding ground for germs. So there are thousands of dogs who go to these dog parks. And ideally, in a perfect world, all the owners would be responsible and have their dogs fully up to date on all their vaccinations and shots may be healthy dogs. But unfortunately, that's not the case. Um, many times, owners will take their dogs there, they urinate there, they go to the bathroom. Owners are not always very responsible about picking up after themselves. They chew on the same toys, they drink out of the same water dishes, and it is just a petri dish of germs waiting for your dog. Um, I know many people who have horror stories of their dog picking up things, um, many that have shared them online with us from their dogs going to dog parks. I mean, do you think you would want to drink out of the same bowl that 150 other people have in that day without it being washed? Probably not. And so it's essentially the same thing with our dogs is they are swapping all these germs, going to the bathroom where hundreds of other dogs have, sniffing the ground where hundreds of other dogs have been, and we have no way of knowing what those other dogs have or haven't been up to date on. So it's always a gamble, you don't know. Maybe your dog will be perfectly fine, but it's always a risk that comes with the territory. Please understand that my intentions are not to just say all dog parks are bad. There certainly are people who have gone for the lifetime of their dog and have wonderful experiences. However, you have to be able to weigh the pros and cons and decide for yourself. For us personally, the problematic play styles, the over arousal, the unknown dogs, potentially resource guarding, the barrier frustration, all equals a bad combination for us and our dog. So I know that video can be a little bit overwhelming um, and it can leave owners feeling like, well, what do I do with my dog? I want them to interact with other dogs. I want them to have an enriched life. Um, and so what we do is we have some dog friends that we get drags together with, with dogs that we know are compatible with his play style and his personality. And we just have little puppy play dates with them. Some parks um, and there's some places that will actually let you rent some areas specifically for your dogs, which is a lot better option than unknown dogs that they're not familiar with. There's also a wonderful app that's called Sniff Spot where you can put in your area code and it will give you some options of some pieces of ground around you where people actually rent out their property to you for an hour where you can take your dog and they can be off leash, they're mostly all fenced in, and you can either take your friends, your friends' dogs, or just your dog and let them explore and sniff and have a fulfilled life where they feel comfortable without the risks involved 
of other unknown dogs and all the germs that dog parks bring with them. So that app is called Sniff Spot, and you can look that up and see if there's some places around you, which is a good option. So I hope this video was helpful, and my goal is not to shame you or uh, make you feel judged if you have been taking your dog to the dog park. There are definitely exceptions to the rules and you may have a wonderful experience at your local dog park and that's great. Um, you know your dog best, you know their personality, you know their play style, you know your parks. And so you are the best advocate for your dog and you know best what's for them. Um, I just want to educate of some of the potential risks that people may not be aware of that are there um, to just help protect everybody and their dog to the best that they possibly can to live the best life that they can as well. So as always, thank you guys so much for joining us. I'm interested to see what you think, what your experience with dog parks are. Let me know in the comments. Um, have they been great? Have you had some not so good experiences? Um, I'm curious to hear some of the feedback that's out there. So with that being said, Drex and I will see you guys next time. Bye.